What's up guys, my name is Liam and today I'm going to be bringing you the myth, the legend, the Logitech G305. How is this mouse holding up in 2023? Is this still the best mouse you can buy for under $50? Let's find out. Alright guys, so here we have the Logitech G305 and this mouse goes way back for me. I honestly know people that still game at a high competitive, I'm talking Apex Legends Predator status, with like with mice like the G203. I see professional level StarCraft uh, 2 players out there using the Logitech G203, um, which is just a cheaper wired version of this. This mouse is even currently the number one seller in gaming mice on Amazon. With that being said, you know, I wanted to come in, I wanted to give my opinion on it, give my thoughts to it. I kind of wanted to compare it to other things on the market and see if this is still gonna be a viable option for you here in 2023. So let's check it out. When it comes to the G305, if you're gonna be taking this mouse in any type of serious type of way when it comes to gaming or anything like that, the first thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that you're gonna drop a lithium battery in here. Lithium batteries, for those of you that don't know, they weigh a lot less than normal batteries. So with the lithium battery in there, as you can see, it is coming in at 89 grams. And I do wanna tell you guys off the bat that this thing does feel extremely bricky. It feels extremely heavy. And to be completely honest with you, I'm not sure that I'd be able to game at a high level myself personally with this mouse without using it for a long time and becoming adjusted to it, especially using sub 50, 40 gram weight mice. It comes to the balancing of this mouse. It is, it is very rear heavy with that battery back there. The weight's mostly gonna be in the palm of your hand. And when it comes to the left and right balancing, it definitely is a lot heavier on the side buttons there. So let's run it through the test and see where it sits in terms of quality with the click, side buttons, and scroll wheel. All right guys, so first off the bat, I wanna say that my mind is honestly absolutely blown with this mouse. You know, I've been so kind of lost in the space with reviewing all these top tier, uh, high-end expensive gaming mice. And the, the number one thing that takes me by surprise with this mouse is how phenomenal the clicks feel. There's like, there's absolutely like no movement on the left and right clicks on this mouse. Honestly, the switches feel phenomenal in here. The click implementation feels spot on. The scroll wheel feels nice and sturdy. There's not, not a whole lot of play in it. The clicks feel smooth. Has a really light click in the middle. So to be completely honest with you guys, I am just completely taken back by the quality of this mouse. And uh, and to be completely honest with you, I, I got a couple of uh, mice I can think off the top of my head that I can probably compare this to that are top tier mice. I'd probably start a war online, so I'm gonna go and keep those comments to myself. The, the only thing about this mouse, as far as the click implementation goes, that I have an issue with is the side buttons. These are some of the worst side buttons that I've ever used to date. They have a ton of pre-travel, a ton of pre-travel, like nuts. Very mushy feeling. It almost feels like when you're using the side buttons, it actually feels like you're gonna push the side buttons in and they're gonna fall inside the mouse before they actuate. So really that's, and you know, the front the front, the front click isn't that bad, it's just the rear. My copy's having a massive issue with the, the rear click on the side buttons. So aside from that, you know, this is still a real solid feeling mouse. It feels great. Um, you know, I've never really been a fan of the G305 shape, but I know that there's a ton of people out there that would swear by it and would go to war with me over that statement. So, uh, you know, with that being said, honestly, by today's standards, this is for the price this is coming in at right now, this is running in at about $35. So the performance on it's great. Honestly, some really impressive stuff here. And I know that, I know that Logitech has tried coming out with like a pro version, which to be completely honest with you was wired. It wasn't really that impressive. I honestly feel like Logitech's missing a big opportunity here. If they were to come out with a true, uh, you know, super light pro version of this mouse, you know, I honestly think that it would kill it. Um, I would honestly be excited to check it out, even though this isn't my number one type of a shape. Um, you know, I feel like overall it's a great mouse. If they can get the weight down, work on the balancing, you know, and really that's all they have to do, just fix the side buttons. They can honestly leave everything the exact same on here. And I think that this thing could be a possible gem. So really impressive stuff there. You know, honestly, just by the clicks alone and the feel of the mouse, I can understand why this is a number one bestseller. And for some reason, this is the mouse that 
when I talk to just average people in public or just anybody that doesn't have a whole lot of knowledge about the mouse community, um, this is kind of always the mouse that people seem to gravitate towards. And, you know, I, I truly can understand why. What else is out there? What else can we compare it to? And is it going to be better than other offerings out there that are under 50 bucks? So the first one I'm obviously going to bring up is going to be the Razer Orichi V2. And to be completely honest with you, I kind of understand now where Razer's position was on releasing this mouse. Um, obviously, since the G305 is dominating the space right now and the sales are going through the roof, they kind of want to offer their own competition out there. I'm honestly extremely impressed uh, with the Razer Ricci V2. I definitely feel like, just off the bat, that this mouse feels like a, a, a more modern upgraded version of the G305. Um, as terms as the clicks go, a lot of people can argue whether or not they like this top shell design to where you can take it off and swap it out. And as you can see, I do have the solo AAA lithium battery in there. So for those of you that are using this mouse, if you like to game with this mouse and use it, like I would say more on a competitive level, um, I would definitely recommend sticking just the AAA battery, the lithium. Now I know that with the balance, it does make it kind of rear heavy. However, it, this is the lightest option that you have. And you know, I did a bunch of testing. There's some people that claim they can't tell the difference using a, a lithium AA battery, even though it is heavier and it does kind of work with the balance better but through my testing experience i kind of did prefer just to stick with the AAA battery as far as the clicks go the clicks feel phenomenal in this they feel great the scroll wheel feels pretty same on both but i do feel like this one feels a little lighter a little crispier on the orichi the side buttons on this on my copy are, are flawless this actually does come with better skates as well all right so coming in at 66 grams uh, with the lithium AAA battery in there. The only real issue that I have with this mouse, uh, besides the balancing on it with having to put your own battery in there, is I do get some side play on the clicks, and to be completely honest with you, when you're using this mouse normally, and you're pushing down, it never really becomes that much of an issue to me. I never really noticed it, but it's definitely not as fine-tuned or as stiff as the 305 where you're getting no play. But aside from that, the side buttons are super crispy, the scroll wheel, they're pretty similar, but I do like this one more. It feels a little lighter, a little crispier, a little more snappy and punchy. And, um, you know, I actually do prefer the clicks more on the Orichi as well. So when it comes to the shape of these two mice, you know, there's a lot of people that love the Orichi, but there's also a lot of people that don't like it. A lot of people don't like the shape. They think that it feels small. Um, personally, I do prefer the shape in this a lot more. As you can see, it is a bit shorter there. But overall, the Orichi feels much wider. When you're holding in the middle of the mouse there on the sides with the egg shape, it definitely is a, a overall wider feeling mouse. And when it comes to the side profiling here, you can see that this tapers off much slowly. So this fills up the palm and the hand much more, whereas this has a way more aggressive curve. So this one feels much shorter in the hand, even though the base may not look that much shorter. Overall, when you're holding this mouse, it feels way shorter in the hand just because of that aggressive curve. Look at that. It's a literally like a world of difference. So honestly, my personal preference is I, I prefer the shape of the Orichi over this. And I honestly, I love everything about the mouse. But of course, that's just subjective. You know, teach their own. As far as terms of performance, what comes out of the package, what you get, uh, weight, balance, um, you know, honestly, this, the, in my opinion, the reach, the reach kind of takes the cake on everything. So you're looking at about $10 price difference, but with the $10, what do you get? You do get better skates. Uh, you get better weight, uh, better clicks in my opinion. You know, I kind of do lean to this one. So the next contender that I'm going to bring up here is the Deluxe M800. And this mouse has taken the world by surprise. This is the old school version with the 3335 sensor. So let's go ahead and see how this mouse performs in terms of quality.
you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm really taken back by the build quality in these cheaper mice. It's really impressive. I get like no play on the buttons here. The clicks feel great. There's a slight bit of pre-travel, but not too much. I don't feel like it's hindering at all, any way, shape, or form. The clicks feel great. My only issue that I have with this mouse with the copy is the, the rear side button. Um, the rear side button has a ton of, ton of pre-travel. Right now, this mouse with the 3370 in it is going for $39.99. And to be completely honest with you guys, I have used this mouse more than most of my mice. Um, when I got this mouse, I actually game with it for a while. I love the shape of it. It's got kind of a hybrid shape of the Razer Viper Mini and the Razer Viper Ultimate. So it's kind of a, a medium version in between the two. I think the shape on this feels phenomenal. I think the clicks feel great. I think the performance of this mouse, I personally haven't any, had any issues with it. Um, my only issues when I bought this version is I had to order the PTFE skates on this. Um, I think I got these for around like five or six dollars plus shipping is like ten dollars. So ultimately it did drive the, the cost of the mouse up. However, uh, the weight and performance of this mouse I feel like is phenomenal. With that being said, let's do it on the scale. All right, so we got uh, this version of the mouse coming in at 69 grams. And as far as the balance goes, it has great front to back balance. And when it comes to left to the right, definitely heavy there on the side button side, as expected by most mice. If you could pick this mouse up for $40 and you compare it to this mouse, you know, this mouse does feel a bit more solid as far as terms of button movement and stuff like that. However, I don't think the clicks feel terrible on this. As a matter of fact, when it comes to the clicks, I do feel like the clicks on this mouse do feel better. They feel like they're easier to spam, they're easier to play with. Uh, my only gripe, again, is the, the rear buttons. I'm not sure if they did fix that on the 3370 version or not. But my absolute favorite thing about this mouse, and the reason that this mouse takes the cake, besides the weight, it's got great balance, I love the playability of it, this actually has a battery built into it. So, um... You know, I know for some people that might not be a deal breaker, but the one thing that drove me nuts going way back five years ago, whatever, when I would use a G305 and when I would use the Orichi is the fact that the battery runs out. That's a pain. That's additional cost. You're having to buy more batteries all the time and it just drives that cost up and up and up. Unless you were to buy like a rechargeable battery that you can charge your USB, they do have those. They do have the lithium AAA and AA's that you can charge with USB, but those are pretty expensive as well. Probably be looking around, I'd say, I don't know, maybe $10, $20 for a pack of those. Great stuff here from Deluxe. Let's do a shape comparison. Overall, it's a bit longer. Um, it does have the middle hump here, whereas this one has a middle hump, but it feels much flatter. This does have taper off much aggressively and much quicker. I do feel like the Deluxe is more suitable for various hand grip styles. So that's another thing that a lot of people don't take into consideration when purchasing a mouse is how do you grip the mouse? Do you use a fingertip, relaxed claw, do you palm it? I feel like this is definitely a better option for various types of grips. Overall, I just feel like this one, you know, is just a little bit uh, of a better buy, especially since you can get it with the 3370 sensor. So really impressive stuff there from Deluxe. Um, overall, I think it's a great mouse. The weight and balance feels way better. Um, it just feels easier to move around, track shots with stuff like that. And uh, I'm a huge fan of, of the shape of this mouse. I think it's great. Okay, so the final contender I'm gonna bring out is gonna be the Pulsefire Haste, and this is the wireless version. This mouse currently is going for $49.99. Great deal on this mouse. I love this mouse. Ever since I've picked this mouse up, I've sworn by it. It's great. I paid full price for this. I got this for like $80 or something like that. And to be completely honest with you, even purchasing this mouse at that price, I didn't have any regrets doing so. So let's jump into the build quality of the Pulsefire Haste and see where we're sitting. All right, so overall, the build quality of this mouse, it honestly feels phenomenal. This mouse, out of all of them, definitely feels like the lightest in hand. 
I also think this mouse has an amazing shape, a phenomenal shape. A lot of people uh, have harped on this mouse, how it has the flat sides on it. Um, as you can see here, I bought this mouse during the heyday when everybody was going out and, and pre-ordering the super glides and stuff like that. So I threw these super glides on here just to mess around with it. You obviously don't have to do this. I'd actually just recommend sticking to the stock PTFE that it comes with. I, I honestly couldn't praise this mouse enough, especially since it is coming in at $49 right now. This also does have the 3335 sensor in it. Uh, a lot of people in the mouse community were taken back by that. But overall, as, as, as far as the performance in terms of this mouse goes, the only real complaint I have about this mouse is a scroll wheel. The scroll wheel is like the skinniest, tiniest scroll wheel that I think I've ever probably seen on a mouse. Um, a gaming style mouse anyways, that is. And, you know, just kind of taken back by it. It's kind of weird how how small, how skinny it is. It's not as easy to just grab and actuate. But with that being said, I don't really have any issues with it. You know, just personal preference. Just me nitpicking it. But, you know, aside from that, I love the shape. I feel like the shape's great. I do feel like it has a pretty similar um, shape to the deluxe mouse. Um, however, it is just a bit wider, a bit flatter on the sides, which, you know, personally, I kind of do prefer. I do like the feel of this. Side buttons feel great. There's hardly any side wobble on the buttons. You know, this is a great contender. In terms of the shape with the G305, it's got the same thing. It has more of that uh, middle hump. Um, that tapers off more aggressively where this does have the middle hump but tapers off slower there So this one fills up the palm more. I do feel like this mouse is more suitable for various types of grips out there um, The the haste is definitely much more wider Which I do kind of prefer wider mice Great stuff here from these offerings. And to be completely honest with you, the price of these mouse, I'm honestly just truly blown away by the quality, how the clicks feel. Uh, I feel like all four of these mice are solid contenders. So if you're a gaming enthusiast, you game a lot, and you can only choose one mouse, what would be my first option? The Atlantis Mini. I think this is hands down the best mouse you can get bang for the buck. Weighs 50 grams, switches are phenomenal. It's my favorite switches in there. 3395 top gaming sensor, weight balance on this blows these mice out of the water. So I definitely think this is the best mouse in performance of value to dollar that you can get. Right now this mouse is coming in $89 and I would suggest that if you can save up a little bit more money to go for this option. However, if you could not go for that option, I would drop the tier like this. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put the Pulse Fire Haste as number one. I feel like the fact it has a battery in it, the weight's great, the balance is great, it feels phenomenal. Honestly, has some of the best left to right balance um, out of mice that are more expensive than it. So overall, they knocked the weight out of the park on this. My copy's coming in at 64 grams. This gaming mouse out of the box has everything you need to get up and running. The skates are great. Performance is great. Has a battery built into it. The weight and balance is absolutely phenomenal. Knocks out of the park. So I would actually go with this as my first option. Uh, as far as my second option goes, you know, I would say it's really just preference. Um, I would probably put the Deluxe up there. The fact that you can get this for $39 and it comes with a 3370 on it, which is actually a better sensor than the Pulse Fire Haste, you know, I feel like the, qual my, the quality on my copy is great. You can pick this mouse up off of Amazon. If the quality on it's bad, you know, obviously you have the option to easily exchange it there. So... You know, a lot of people get concerned by this mouse thinking that it's like some cheap, cheaply made knockoff mouse. And again, you know, with, with having Amazon backing it up and stuff like that, I definitely do think that this is an amazing option. And then, you know, next, just, and this is just personal preference, you know, I would probably go with the Orichi. I just feel like the Orichi is just an updated version of this. Yeah, it is $10 more, but it does come with the better skates. There's options to check, uh, to swap out the shell. The weight and balance on our superior. The clicks and switches on our superior, in my opinion. So, yeah, so that's kind of where I would go from there. And, you know, these two, in my opinion, are kind of a toss-up. Um, kind of at a tie. So, it really would just come down to what you prefer. This mouse does have great value. Again, the only concern... Um, that I that I have about this mouse for other people out there is just that not 
not a whole lot of people uh, like how small that this mouse feels in the hands. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or anything I can help you out with, please let me know down below in the comments. Aside from that, if you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, please subscribe to my channel, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. I'll see you soon.